Well, hello, everybody. I think this stream is working now. <laughs> it took me a good 45 minutes to get the stream working. 30 minutes of troubleshooting. And it still didn't work out the way that I thought it would. But it's live now, so that's great. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to come in and yeah. Let me know if the audio is not good. I can make it louder. Let me see my settings here. Testing one, two, three. Should be okay. Hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> There's a little bit of a delay between what I see in the chat and the video. So if I'm slow to respond, sorry, that's just how it is. <laughs> uh, here's our first question. Chaco asks, how do you stay motivated to do something even if you suck at it? Well, you know, there's that quote that says, uh, hard work beats talent, right? Let me switch my, switch it out here. Let's go to the browser. All right. There's a quote here by Kevin Durant. Hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. So even if you don't have talent and you think you suck at something um you gotta you gotta stay at it and i actually made a video on the creative process so if you just type creative process on tronic um oh here we go it says here how to deal with depression that's the title how to deal let me move me, let me move me over so this is the title let me make this bigger how to deal with depression and anxiety during the creative process watch that video maybe I could put the link in the live chat right here um, Chaco. and it explains the creative process and why it could be so demoralizing sometimes and uh, yeah check that out I hope that helps um, there's it's basically the gist of it is right here where we go through this process I hope that's showing up yeah in the beginning you come out with an idea and you think this is awesome then you find out it's trickier than you know you thought it was gonna be to make it and then you start making it, but it's complete shit because it doesn't look like anything that you wanted when you started. And then you start thinking that you're shit. I am shit. And then, in the end, you after you clean it up a bit, do a bunch of drafts, you realize, hey, this might be okay, until finally, it's this might be awesome. Okay, so watch that video, definitely. And uh, let me see what's the next question. Tips on self-control. Um, Sean is asking tips on self-control. Okay, well, that's a that's a tough one. That's a very personal personal thing. Uh, it's a good question. What helps me is to you know think about what your goals are. I always think about the long run. So you know, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a leeway stop and think you know what will happen if i do this thing that might be self-destructive and it might feel good in the short term um versus the long run the fear of doing the wrong thing should be driving you toward the fear of doing the right thing even though you might fail <laughs> so to speak you know self-sabotage is a huge issue we all deal with that but it's something you got to work on just the fact that you're asking about it shows awareness that you want to improve so there's that let me see how the chat is doing uh, 
Let's see, Leo is asking, what kind of cardio would you recommend to incorporate in your hypertrophy training program and other programs as well? What kind of cardio do you do? Uh, so that's a great question. Cardio in general for me is all about, I, I do whatever is fun, okay? Like literally, if it's not fun, I'm not going to really, I'm not really going to do it for very long. Let's put it that way. So for me personally, I like to ride my bike. Um, lately, I've been jumping rope, uh, you know, skipping, skipping rope. And that's not the most fun thing. But the fact that I'm not good at it and that is very challenging to me is fun for me. For me, I find things that are challenging generally to be fun. So, you know, I love to swim. That's another thing. I know it's not easy to have access to a pool or uh, the ocean or the sea. But, you know, there might be public pools that you might take up swimming. Swimming, swimming is amazing. I love swimming. Uh, can you tell? Um, other than that, I don't know. I do so many things, honestly. Like, I want to go skiing next weekend, and so that might be my cardio for a few hours, you know? I like to mix it up, basically. Variety is very important. There are so many ways of staying fit. I generally don't do running, for example. I could run a few miles if I wanted in a non-stop, but I don't find it fun, so I don't do it. But I know I could do it. Instead of running, I like to sprint. Sprinting is really fun. Also, sprinting is really fun because uh, I get to sprint to the ocean <laughs> and then go swimming. That's extra fun. All right, let me switch back to chat here. I got no questions coming in. I don't know why. Let's see how many people are in the chat, actually. We have eight people watching. Okay, it's not many. It's a very intimate crowd right now. Cool. If uh, nothing comes in, I might just end the stream. But in the meantime, I, if you guys have not seen my latest videos, definitely check them out. I have, uh, I've been trying to post about like two videos a week, sometimes three. And in this last week, because I just came from a trip, I haven't been able to post any, but I decided to do this live stream because uh, that's a way of, you know, engaging with you guys, the YouTube uh, community. And I have videos that are processing and I'm editing at the moment and hopefully we'll have more out there. If you have any, um, any requests, for any videos I should make or a video series. I'm all ears. Um, <laughs> Dre, uh, Dre Hoddle is asking, you bullish? So bullish meaning, do you believe the prices are gonna go up? And by his name being Hoddle, with a Bitcoin icon, I can tell he's asking about Bitcoin and crypto in general. In general, I'm very bullish on Bitcoin. I actually have a video on that. Let me switch back to screen. So if you type Bitcoin 101 on Tronic, my name, you should find this video. It says Bitcoin 101. What is Bitcoin? It's my only cryptocurrency video, really. Um, how, you know, what's Bitcoin? How does it work? Will it change society? And in my opinion, Bitcoin is going to be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in a few years. One Bitcoin. So whether Bitcoin is $7,000 right now for one Bitcoin or $20,000 right now, it's irrelevant to me. Okay, just hold on tight. And that's it. And if you're in altcoins, don't worry about it. Um, if you're in altcoins, what gives value to altcoins is often the value of Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin skyrockets one day and then cools off, altcoins are going to, 
are going to see that reward as well. It's just a constant cycle. Okay, enough about crypto. Let's go back to other questions. Sam is asking, any tips for doing hit, doing dips? And also, hello, hello, Sam. Uh, so, um, let's see. Back to the screen. All right, so dips. Uh, yeah, d dips are really hard. You can... You can do it two ways. You can either lean forward, so your shoulders, it gets more of your shoulders, anterior delts. Or, if you want to make it harder, you can try tucking your knees up, and that will force you to not be able to go forward as much, and then it'll work out your triceps as much. It'll work out your triceps more. If you go into an L position where you raise both legs straight up into a straight leg version it's going to make it even harder and that is very difficult so if you're having trouble doing dips at all you can other than working on push-ups push-ups are very good other than working on push-ups you can set the dip bars low if you have the luxury of doing such and low doing negative dips and uh, increase your range that way that is one way that might work for you some people do bench dips which you can look them up but they are generally too easy compared to full-on dips so i'm not sure exactly what your question was about dips but i gave you a whole spiel of how to make it harder easier <laughs> um and yeah be specific with your questions guys because if you just ask tips for dips i mean it's like it's a huge that's a huge question in itself. So, and a happy Saturday, everybody, or Sunday if you're somewhere else in the world. <laughs> Let's see. Sunil is asking, Hi, Antronik. Can you talk about the proper form for rows? Sure. Rows are... I have a video on rows. If you type in incline rows on Tronic, let me switch this here and make me look, it's just a head. If you type incline rows on Tronic, I don't know if you can see that. Boom. First video that comes up is how to do incline rows with minimal equipment. Okay, so in this, hey guys, my name is Antronic. that's my name. In this video, I share with people how to do rows with minimal equipment so you can use a bar you can use rings and or you can even use a table right all sorts of options exist but if you don't even have those options you can use a bed sheet and you hook it over your door and then you can do it do it like so and like this and in this video I give tips on in this video, I give tips on how to do your form. So let's review. Mm, turn this on. Right. And just slowly lean back until your arms are straight. And I like to put my hands like to on the edges like this. And in the beginning, people start out like slumped like this. You want to bring the shoulders back behind you, back and down, like good posture, and then drive the elbows behind you, okay? So these are standard incline body weight rows, and if this is very easy for you, you can lower down and just, let's say, at, at hip height and reach. Okay, so I'm going to stop it there. You can also, if that's also still very easy, you can also do it with one arm. So one arm rows, that makes it significantly harder. And then, of course, if it's too hard, you can go up and do a higher incline with one arm rows. So basically, yes, we can, um, we, you basically need to bring your shoulders back together and make sure they're not slumped up, but down, away from the ears, and back together, and then you initiate the row, okay? Whenever you extend the arms and straighten the arms, you can bring the shoulders forward, 
and then retract again to do full range. But that's up to you, you know? Some people like to hold the retraction the entire time. Both ways are valid. Okay? <clears throat> so I hope that helps. Let's move on to the next question here. Um, my Green Shoes says, I've tried strength training but always end up getting hurt around my shoulder or elbow tendons. I've been working with a CrossFit coach and such, but it didn't help. Okay, well, um, that's a good question. Are you doing, so CrossFit, that's a, you know, CrossFit is, doesn't have the best reputation because they tend to work you too hard. And if you're a beginner or you don't have the mobility for it, you might be overdoing things and, you know, Part of strength training or any training in general, if you want to do it for your entire life, which you should, you want to be you want to be able to be that person who works out not only when they're 30 and 40, but also at 80 and 90 years old. Right. So whenever you start having pains, even if your trainer is telling you to do something and you're in pain, joint pain, so joints. Joints are basically wherever there's no muscle belly. That's just a simplified version. So we have lots of muscles here, right? We have more joints here and connective tissue than muscle. So if your wrists are hurting, that's usually joint pain and that's not muscular pain oftentimes. Same with the elbow. The elbow has a high concentration of tendons and ligaments, right? On both sides. And the muscles that control these things are the biceps, triceps, and forearms, right? So if your wrists are hurting or elbows are hurting, so that's a sign that it's not regular muscle soreness, it's joint pain. And a trainer or your coach will never know that you're in pain unless you tell them. Only you know. A doctor doesn't even know, right? So when you start to feel hints of a pain, the slightest bit of a pain, understand that that's not normal and that you should probably stop what you're doing even if they've told you to do that or even if a program says to do that. You need to investigate what's the issue here. So, and the shoulder is extremely complicated because shoulders, shoulders have lots of joints. It's the most mobile of joints as well but there's also muscles around it. So it's ex so the pain you experience in the shoulder could be muscle soreness, but if it's on the inside, if you feel it's not normal, a lot of times you have to go with your feeling. If you feel it's not normal, then it's not normal. If it's not a, not a good pain, as the best way I could describe it, like now for in the general public, then it's definitely something you should watch out for. Now, what you should do is honestly the most responsible way if you haven't seen a physiotherapist go see a physiotherapist specifically a sports oriented physiotherapist because some you know phys physical therapists will will make it such that oh you can't raise your arm okay let's make it such that you can raise your arm so you can reach the 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 plates from the cupboard, from the kitchen, right? Like very basic stuff, right? But if you want to get really strong and do more challenging things, you got to see someone who's a little more sports oriented, right? So it's just different populations. They work with different populations. And um, yeah, other things you should work on are in general. So if you ever get hurt in the shoulder, if your flexibility is terrible, you might have to work on that, but that's not generally, stretching is not generally the best thing to do all the time. Bands, get a TheraBand and do high repetitions of mindless exercises. You can just literally go to, let's go here and type, go to Google Images and type physical therapy shoulder bands right or band exercises right 
Here we go. And then look at this infographic, right? Look at those things, investigate them. Or this one, right? Look at them in detail. And if you have a, use a band of, that's a light band, okay? You can also sometimes use a bicycle tube. If you don't have a band, but you have an old bicycle tube that you haven't used, those might be light as well, depending on the thickness. And you want to do 25 to 50 reps per set of each of these exercises. Now, which ones to do? The ones that don't hurt, okay? So if raising your arm overhead hurts, don't do that one. If doing this external rotation exercise hurts, don't do that one. But if the internal rotation is okay, that's fine. These are general, this is a very general advice, you know, because the physiotherapist is probably going to have you do some sort of band work as well with high repetitions. Now, um, but again, be extremely self-aware. Uh, even if a physiotherapist is suggesting something and it doesn't feel right, you have to articulate it to them. But definitely go to one and see what your issues are. You know, so maybe you have hypermobility. Maybe you don't have any mobility and you need more flexibility. Everyone's very different. So I hope that helps. Um, and let's see. Leo is asking in regard to the value of Bitcoin. How many clients have you got? Or in other terms, do you still have clients seeing as 0.1 Bitcoin as a lot? In general, everyone sees that as a lot. And, um, you know, I have a couple clients uh, that are rotating every month. So, you know, I, I like, to, I also don't like to have a lot of online clients because it, fractures my attention so much and I like to spend so much time on each one that if I have too many I've noticed that I don't do as well and I can't keep up with them so that's another reason why I had to raise my rates so you know hope that answers that let's see next question let's switch to this time lapse does your dog do calisthenics too? He seems to be watching carefully. Yes, I'm sure Medox knows all the ways of doing calisthenics. For example, here's a good, I just typed skin the cat with Antronic. If you haven't seen any of my videos, my dog is often in them. So if I put it myself here, I put myself there. There's my dog learning how to do how to do skin the cat, for example. And, uh, you know, my dog is really old now. She can barely walk. She wobbles when she walks. She walks. Like, I take her for a walk almost every day. But very slowly, you know, and she can't really run in anymore. She'll run in the first, first 10 seconds of the walk because she's so excited. And then that's it, you know. So, <laughs> so, yeah, she's not paying attention right now. I'm, she didn't get that part of the lesson. Okay, moving on to the next question. Um, by the way, thanks for all the questions, guys. This is, uh, this is great. All right, Jovan is asking, Hey, Antronik, should I wait to lose weight and then do go back with body weight since I have no ways of doing back uh, oh I see what you're saying okay you mean should you lose weight and then exercise your back muscles with body weight exercises well okay so here's a good question so what Jovan is basically asking is so Jovan is basically asking, okay, here's how I understand it. He's saying, should I lose weight and then do strength training? Or, uh, lose, start losing weight and do strength training at the same time, right? Is that, I think that's how I understood it. 
in general you want to always be doing strength training of some sort even if you don't have a way or it feels very limited, your options are limited, try to find a pull-up bar. Try to find the way to, like I, you can even do rows at home with just the bed sheet with the video I just showed you before, for example, and that'll work out your back. And if that's not hard enough, you can do one arm rows, for example. So you should always be doing strength training because if you are eating at a deficit, you're a ca caloric deficit meaning you're not eating as many calories as you need and your body will start shedding some fat it will also start shedding some muscle okay because your body's not getting as much nutrition as it needs and that is how one will lose fat but if you're not strength training and giving your body the stimulus to the, the, the signal to stay strong, then it will also lose some muscle. You won't lose all your muscles. But to mitigate or to prevent the loss of muscle as much as possible, even when you're on a cut, meaning you're eating at a deficit, you should be strength training. Okay, any sort of strength training. When I say strength training, it's any sort of resistance training, whether it's lifting weights or doing bodyweight exercises, okay? Using just the bar or the floor or the rings, gymnastics rings. So you have many options. Try to find some way, find some way that works for you. So I hope that helps. All right. Samuel is asking, are there any exercises I can do to progress to a full L-sit besides a tucked L-sit? Uh, yeah, like there are, so I have a couple of videos. Okay, if you type in YouTube, improve pike compression, for example, on Tranik. The first video that comes up, uh, the second one is the L-sit. The first one is my video on how to improve your active pike compression now this is basically an ad no, it's not an advanced exercise at all um, it's let me forward it to the actual exercise it's kind of like this your butts on the floor and your your butts on your floor the, the butts on the floor the feet are in front of your hands are in front of you and you raise your feet got it this is called a seated leg lift Okay, now there are many variations of this. I will post. There are many variations of that exercise in that video, and that will help help you a lot. Okay, other than that, work on your support hold on the rings, which I have a video on that as well right here hey guys my name is Antranik and I'm here with my dog Medark and basically wait a second is everything okay yes everything's good all right yes so back I'm to gonna here. be teaching you the support hold for this video the support, the support hold. hold is very simple yeah this is a ring support hold it's the top of a disc position and normally, we start out like this, the end goal is this. Notice that this is not an iron cross. My arms are not all the way out there. It's just here, okay? So. All right, so and the reason why I recommend the support hold is because it, it basically trains your shoulders to press them down, okay? So you're not just like shrugging them up. Press, you, you, you can't really do it properly if you're shrugging them up. You want to be pressing down. And in an L-sit, you're pressing your shoulders down against the floor. Your hands are pressing down against the floor. So, so doing this support hold, preferably on the rings, but definitely get some rings if you have not experienced it. It's really, really fun. It's only like 20, 30 bucks nowadays and totally worth it. It will change your life. Um, 
So the support hold in combination with the seated leg lifts in my compression video right here. This is like how to improve active pike compression will make your L-sit game much stronger, faster. Okay, let me go back here, back to the questions. All right, love the dog. Thanks, green shoes. I love my dog as well. All right, so thanks for answering my question, <laughs> my dog question. Right, that's awesome. Uh, okay, cool. We have 16 people here. It's a very intimate crowd. It's like a small workshop. Very cool. I wanted to ask about the 5x5 five five strong lifts training. It's a beginner's program that I am following to gain strength. I am thinking about mixing calisthenics and 5x5 five five weightlifting. Um, I am doing weights because you, you build adequate muscle as fast as weights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I get it. So, in general, you don't want to mix programs up. Okay, if you're doing the 5x5 five five program, the strong lifts program, and you start doing a bunch of other things on top of it, or, you know, you, you let's say you stop doing bench press and you start doing push-ups instead, right? And then you change some other things. Then, technically, you're not doing the strong lifts program anymore, okay? <laughs> and that is... so. I know everyone wants to change things up though so I don't know if you're qualified or you if the changes you make will actually be detrimental or make things worse so I don't know if you're if you can make some changes on your own I mean of course you could do whatever you want but and it's true that yes lifting weights will build muscle faster than calisthenics in general the progress is a little more linear you know because uh, you could just keep loading up the weight rather than playing with leverages although i find i find that going to a gym is not as fun as being outdoors because i have the luxury of being outdoors our weather is good being outside is nice. <laughs> Being out in the sunshine, connecting with the ground, with the sun, connecting with other people. Anyway, um, there's a pros and cons to everything. And, you know, if your question was the other way, like if you were doing, let's say, the recommended routine on our bodyweight fitness, right? and you wanted to incorporate weightlifting which is like the the reverse of what you asked because i don't have the exact answer to your question it would be if you go into frequently asked questions integrating barbell squats and deadlifts there's a way to integrate the squats and deadlifts into the body weight fitness routine okay so there's also that option <laughs> i'm just sharing information here so yeah you're welcome sam you're welcome i guess that's about it for questions i'm not getting any more questions if not i will just wrap it up here um, in the description, YouTube description of this video, I have a couple links to some ways you can keep stay in touch with me. First of all, I have my website at ontronic.org, which I am updating and refining. And I'm going to be having, actually, I'll show you a preview. I have a, I'm creating the index for all my... Where is it here? Where is it? Yes. I'm creating an index for all fitness related blog posts that I've ever created. And turns out, you know, I have a lot. <laughs> it's, it's, 
so flexibility routines flexibility I have so much on yoga and flexibility I have lots of ran other random blog posts and then you know of course self massage I'm huge on self massage a lot of training tutorials obviously you know and of course injury recovery related web um, things coming up so yeah that's that's great that I'm finally gonna have the website organized in a way that everyone could be able to find the information readily I'm also organizing the other random health and weather and inspirational blog posts and educational and productivity related <laughs> blog posts I have so many blog posts I have 800 blog posts guys I also have anatomy and physiology guides over here in the sidebar anatomy series physiology series pharmacology series basic biology microbiology yeah I have all these things I have to just make it a little easier for people to be able to find and then other th other than that I also have an Instagram if you type ontronic.org those are just like um, I don't know if you guys can see this well yeah you can um, yeah there's a lot of good stuff here a lot of YouTube clips so if you don't always catch a YouTube video maybe you can follow me on Instagram and of course I have a Facebook page but you know Facebook is a weird place I basically only have a Facebook account now to keep this page updated so it's, again it's at ontronic.org same stuff and I also have a mailing list which you can sign up for uh, the link is in the description which I will also throw in the chat right now Sign. Uh, I can't send it in the chat okay it thinks it's a funky URL because it is it's a short short URL maybe I can just uh, do it like this sign up for my email mailing yeah that I think that works awesome so uh, we have a couple more questions um, all right let me switch back to the beautiful time lapse <laughs> okay Jim Makos is asking I downloaded the bodyweight fitness app and from my understanding it's the recommended routine between and between the body line holds there are rest times but you somewhere said to do it without rest correct you should do it with as minimal rest as possible the app is not generally the most up-to-date or accurate if you want the most accurate check out the R bodyweight fitness text and just read through it and see what is recommended there so if you read through there I believe it says do it with as little rest as possible so if you need to rest five seconds or a hundred seconds <laughs> that's okay everyone's different eventually you'll rest zero seconds right and so that's the goal with that and yeah let's see it doesn't matter says why during every workout I don't feel tired at the end like I can I still can do pull-ups should I do more or just stop after like three four sets of eight to twelve reps of every exercise in the recommended routine so if you're able to do eight to twelve reps of each exercise because you're able to do more than eight reps you should choose a harder variation in general that is the guideline so in the pull-up progression choose a variation that is more difficult that will force 
that's difficult enough that you can't do three sets of eight reps of okay and in general you don't want to feel like you're you, you're dead at the end of the session it's good to feel that way sometimes but I'm saying it's not necessary to feel that way to have progress okay because sometimes doing that extra set is a great idea by the way um, you know if you're doing three sets if you want to add a fourth set because you're feeling so good sometimes it's a, it's a great idea why not even a fifth set but in general understand that the closer you reach to absolute failure the more likelihood of injury occurring so there's a risk and reward here and sometimes the reward isn't even there so you might think I'll have better progress by doing more right but what if and, and what if you don't get injured great you don't get injured doing that extra extra few sets however if you burn yourself out so much that your recovery is hampered then maybe you won't you know you might need more days of rest or if you keep that up for weeks on end you're gonna have so much accumulated fatigue that you're gonna need to take a whole week or two off you know what I mean so always find that balance for you and you know I don't know how I don't know who you are you're on the internet like if you're 15 years old you're gonna be able to do a lot more than someone who's 50 only because you've got the hormones raging and your recovery rate is way better uh, you have less compounded injuries or maybe zero injuries you know what I mean as someone gets older and their injuries build up things get more complicated and complex so they have to work out in a different way and be mindful of much more things that have compounded over time so you know try to find the balance with you all right Hannah is asking if you had to live by an ill-advised fad diet which one and why <laughs> that's a weird question I mean I nothing comes to mind right now because I'm like why would I do an ill-advised fad diet in general any diet is the like oh here's one sure um, what I mean there's so many bad ones like there's a celery diet where all you do is eat celery there's a diet where <laughs> uh, people do juice fasts where all they do is have juice every day and nothing else um, these these aren't good diets these are these are generally bad diets the only reason you lose weight is because you're eating less calories than before it's not because the celery is like increasing your metabolism or you know <laughs> anything crazy like that in general it's just because you're eating less and you know a lot of people will do certain what do you call them uh, cleansing diets where or, or fasts where they will not eat for like seven days so that they can clean their system um, you know your liver and kidneys are working 24 7 to keep your body clean so the idea of having to not eat it not eat anything for a week to really clean it out doesn't really make sense to me physiologically speaking sure you might lose weight but you you'll also lose a lot of muscle you know if you don't eat if there's no protein in your diet after a few days the only store of protein is in your muscles so and every single muscle every single cell in your body needs protein to survive and replicate so you constantly need to eat some sort of protein I mean so there's so many bad diets I can't even I don't, I don't know if I would ever pick even one <laughs> if I had to I don't know that's a weird question but it was a good question it made me think it doesn't ma matter is asking what variation should I do after pullovers 
I kind of don't want to do weighted pull-ups. Um, muscle-ups? Well, muscle-ups could be hard on the joints, so that's generally not good. Unless you could do a bunch of them easily. That might be an option. Uh, I really would recommend weighted pull-ups. Okay? Uh, other options are you know, unilateral pulling exercises, such as archer pull-ups, let's say. Thing, um, eventually, maybe you can do negative one-arm pull-ups, but, you know, that depends on your weight and your size and how strong your joints are, because one-arm pulling work could be hard on the joints. In general, archer pull-ups or pull-ups wherever you, you hold your let's say you hold your wrist and pull up you know and then the lower you hold the harder it gets that could be a progression you use so that's another variation unilateral exercises take a little bit more time because you have to do double the sets but you know it's a very good way of increasing the intensity weighted pull-ups are very simple uh, if you just have like I work out at the beach oftentimes so I will have a backpack and in another bag, a sandbag, that I'll just load with sand and then throw it in the backpack, put the backpack on, and then I will do weighted pull-ups or dips. So, yeah. Let's see here. And you're welcome. You're welcome, and thank you for asking the question as well. All right. Modern Minuteman is asking... Hey, I just did the contact on your website. I'm looking at Floreo, Locomotion, and Idol's routines on your blog. How often should I be doing each of these workouts? Well, a lot of these things, a lot of those things, so first of all, if someone is not, let me, let me get you guys up to speed. If you go to Floreo Project, if you just Google that, the first link should be my, let me move me over here. The first link should be this thing called the Floreo Project, which is my compilation of all of Ido Portal's work. Basically, Ido Portal is a very talented man who marketed himself very well to share a bunch of mobility. And so he was a bunch of different mobility exercises he has. And not just mobility, but... Let me, Floreo movements, which are like really, you know, they're basically capoeira exercises and all that. Anyway, so lots of flow, basically lots of flow, lots of ways of flowing and moving. And there's also even strength work, right? Lots of ways of moving in the world, <laughs> right? Now, his question is, how often should he be doing each of these? Well, in general, they're not, like if you're doing hand balancing and if handstands are easy for you or you're doing locomotive stuff like you're walking in a handstand or doing lizard walks, if these are generally easy for you, you can probably almost do them every day, okay? So that's, that's that, you know? It's basically a lot of skill work. Skill work is stuff that takes re re repetition a lot of repetition to get good at, but it doesn't require necessarily a, a, a lot of strength. So, so yeah, um, gen, that's just my general advice there, you know. But if it is really difficult, if it is difficult, then you gotta take rest days. Don't do it. Don't do everything every day. Okay. I mean, if eventually the, you need rest days, eventually. You know, if you're doing upper body a lot, uh, you got to switch it up, do something with the lower body, right? I like to slack line. Whenever my upper body is destroyed, I will slack line. And, and that to me is really fun. So Sam is asking, what do you think of the starting stretching routine? It's a very good routine. It's progressive. It has progressive progressions and, you know, Maybe it's not it's not as easy to follow because you need to read the texts and there are some illustrations though some people have created you can Google and probably find and yeah I think that's uh, 
That's all the questions we got. It's been almost an hour. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Modern Minuteman says, I've been trying to do everything every day. Combination of Tom Merrick stuff, who referred me to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you to Tom Merrick. Uh, Tom Merrick is here. I'll share with you who he is. Tom Merrick has a YouTube channel. He also has a bodyweight warrior. He has all... Tom Merrick is his YouTube channel, and he has very good, high-quality videos on how to do different bodyweight exercises, just like me. So thank you, Tom, for sharing my work, and I will share yours as well. <laughs> all right, so, all right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you, everybody. This is fun. This was a very casual... This was a very casual little uh, live stream. I feel very comfortable doing this live stream. It's actually pretty cool. Instead of, you know, because I'm working, I'm creating videos right now and I don't have any videos to publish today and I don't want a whole week to go by without another video. Um, this was basically my way of, oh, my green screen's not working as well. Oh, that's a sign. That's a sign I'm out of here. Anyway, this live stream was like, what I was saying was this live stream is a video, so hey, I'll do a live stream once in a while if I can't get two videos out a week. I don't want to sacrifice quality for quantity, but then again, if I do a live stream and I do a good job, then that's, that's a good mix, I, I guess. I'm learning a lot about how to optimize my whole life since I'm doing this full time right now, and I need to really get everything on the up and up. And yeah have a good day everyone thank you all again and see you later